Here's an example of a simple matplotlib animation created using the animation module. Let's see how to make it. The first thing we do, as always, is import the correct library. We then create an empty plot, and this is important. We're going to capture the output of the plot function, the matplotlib artist that draws the lines on the figure. This is the object that's going to get updated on each frame of the animation. Here we define a bunch of global timing variables. You don't have to do it exactly like this, but very often when working with animations, you'll have some kind of counter that keeps track of the animation timer. The first thing we do is define an init function. This function will be run at the start of every loop of the animation, so it needs to zero everything and give us a clean canvas. Notice that we have to specify that we're using the global t variable inside the init function. If this is alien to you, brush up on Python and using variables inside the functions. Then we clear the data container. This is the function to update the line data that is visible in the plot. We'll be calling this often. We return the line object wrapped in a list. Funk animation expects an iterable, since it can update multiple artists in every frame. If we only have one artist, then the simplest way to give funk animation what it wants is to wrap that artist up in a list. This is the function which will be run on every frame of the animation. It's fairly simple. It appends data to the x and y arrays and uses them to update the line object. Again, notice that we return an iterable. We assume that the input data has what we need to update the figure. This is the bit that does all the work. It's a generator that makes new data points which get passed to the update function. This is where the calculation happens. The generator yields the y value and then the time is incremented. This is the bit of the code that pulls everything together. The first two arguments are mandatory. Funk animation requires a figure where the animation will live and an update function. We also pass in the optional frames argument. This is the source of data to pass to the update function. You can put any iterator in here, for example, as we have a generator. We also pass in the init function that we wrote. The interval argument is the delay between frames in milliseconds. Blit equals true activates a process called blitting. Blitting is an algorithm that tries to stop repeating work. For example, most of the image doesn't change between frames, so there's no need to redraw the whole thing. This can speed things up a lot for complicated plots, but isn't mandatory. Save count gives the number of frames to cache. It's necessary to use this parameter if you pass in an argument to frames that doesn't have a length, as for example here, where we give it a generator. With this argument set, the animation object saves 100 frames of the animation for us. Finally, we set repeat equals true. When the frames iterable is exhausted, this means the generator runs out and stops yielding stuff, the init function will be called again and the animation will start over. Here we save the animation as a GIF. Note the FPS argument, which stands for frames per second. Our 100 frame animation will therefore take just over 3 seconds to complete one loop. Here is the output again. As always, you can do extensive customization on every aspect of the figure if you want to. If you're using a notebook, to get the animation to display properly, you'll need to render the animation into an HTML5 video first. To do that, first import the HTML library from IPython display, then call the animation objects to HTML5 video method. This converts the animation into an HTML video tag, and the HTML library you just imported can display it. Here is a 3D plot. You might be wondering if there's anything behind the mountain. We can make an animation to find out. This is the last bit of code we'll show. The aim is to produce a rotating 3D plot. Don't panic, most of it's stuff we've already seen. This is a bit of code that generates the data. It's just a big hump with some noise. It looks like a very symmetric mountain. This is stuff we've seen before. We're making a 3D axis and plotting a surface. Note that because we have a rectangular grid, we used a plot surface function, or before we used a plot tri surface. This will give a slightly smoother looking mountain. We set the initial view angle to zero. This is what we'll be updating. The update simply changes the view angle. Finally, we run the animation. Notice we don't specify an init function, and the frame parameter is now just a list of numbers, which are the rotation angles. I've turned blitting off because it won't work here. If we want to blit, we need to return an iterable of artists from the update function, which is a little complicated to do with a 3D plot. The animation will still work, it just might be a tiny bit slower. Here is the output in all its glory. 